Welcome to Georgia at War. I thought this was going to be a nice opportunity to show basically how a mission within this server run by the Hoggett community might look because usually I just cut everything up and uh, you only see the best bits so now we can have basically a little bit of a leisure flight with uh, RB-75s engaging targets of opportunity. So the first thing we are going to do is of course start up our aircraft and uh, you'll probably see me do this a couple of times by now basically it's the same routine over and over again prepping the computer and uh, we are also arming our ejection seat and of course inserting a data cartridge and uh, we are all set we are go for ignition and uh, as an added bonus we are using the SRS radio module so we'll have to report to tower Chevy 31 vegan startup We are testing our throttle, making sure everything there works as advertised. Our electronics are now going online. Uh, looks like this guy is trying to take off on a short trip. Uh, an Appa does not want to clear me on startup, maybe because that idiot was using uh, the short strip. Clear for okay, so we're clear for startup and we'll be going for taxi. Anapa, Chevy, three, one, request taxi to runway. We have an F5 coming in right over there. We'll be moving right now. Chevy, three, one, Anapa, taxi. Once we are on the field, we're also going to shut our canopy. There we go. And the canopy is closed. So we have four TV guided missiles and two IR guided missiles. The IR guided missiles are perfect for air defense and are pretty damn good nice missiles to have uh, while the TV guided missiles are exclusively for ground targets. Well, uh, technically you can probably hit a low flying helicopter with it, but it's not something I have yet to actually try. However, it would be fun. Uh, if you know your squadrons by now, you will notice that the AJS-37 we are flying is from F-21 in Luleå and they were one of the only squadrons in Sweden that operated both the fighter attack and recon variants of the Vigan. So basically they, if anyone knows the Vigan in Sweden that would be them. However they have all transitioned to the JAWS 39 Gripen at this point. Uh, Chevy 3, one take off. The SRS module actually adds a lot to the module. And I'm growing actually fond of it because you can enter different frequencies and everything like that. And basically, I'm using the cheat variant. Uh, I'm using the term cheat loosely. Uh, Roger that, and up up. Basically, that's Anapa saying, get the fuck off the field, you lazy bugger. And uh, basically, it's the busy traffic. There might be people coming in for landing. There might be people uh, coming in for everything 
or there might be just an F5 behind us that is a very... An APA traffic in field one, taking the active runway 22 in APA. Chevy 3-1, clearing the field. Basically that was a guy wanting to land and we need to pull up so we don't hit that tree. We don't want to be like Homer Simpson flying this thing. And we are now active. We are going to set a course a little bit more inland. We are going to go away from our afterburner and go full standard subsonic speed. And once locked in, I'm going to find a suitable target. Uh, we have an F5 going on, going to town on that. So F10, we are gonna see if we have a current mission for us, uh, air interdiction. Okay, so we have um, a, quite a lot of air interdiction, actually. If we turn 090... Traffic in field one, clear the active. Uh, okay, so we'll, we'll switch the radio channel to the active combat channel. And uh, target Firefly is ours. 090, uh, basically 100 clicks away. And uh, so we'll be turning to 090. Chevy 3-1 turning 090, objective Firefly. The nice thing about heading 090 is that it's basically dead on. Uh, all I need to do is follow my compass and heading indicator. This is a thing that takes a bit getting used to, but once you've done so, is pretty much second nature. So I'm locking in the autopilot, uh, finding myself on the map, and checking if we can actually find it. Uh, we have a number of FOPs in the area, and there is a there stands to reason that um, there might they might actually provide us with a mission to engage something that have already been captured. If that's the case, we need to be very careful about what we engage, so we avoid any blue on blue. Here we have an EFOP, that's captured uh, and BAI Joker. Uh, we also have BAI Ant Hill over here. We can expect these targets to be defended by uh, enemy defenses, mostly SAMs and AAAs. So while I'm refilling my drink here, we need to be a bit alert on our electronics display. Basically, I'm keeping the chat at a minimum. I'm only opening it if there's... I suspect there's information I should know. Some people prefer to use the chat over SRS for whatever reason. Uh, but basically, getting the information through SRS is far too. Getting the status reports through SRS is far more interesting. However, it's time for us to actually switch on the systems that allow us to use our RB-75s. So, yeah, we're good. We have switched on the radar into a specific mode. We have armed our RB-75s. And if you notice this screen here, it's what I call the targeting computer, but it's basically the TV site. If I aim this at something, uh, or rather, if I aim it at something that's actually moving or looks like to be a vehicle, stuff like that, I will lock the RB-75 onto that target. It's a neat little weapon system, actually. So, we are basically heading in this area near Chagra. Uh, I might actually want to double check if we can uh, go anthill. Uh, we might actually also check if Chagra needs 
Uh, close air support. Also close to this airfield, uh, the Krushnodar airfield and Krushnodar lake, you might en end up uh, engaging bandits. Now, if they are like MiG-23s or MiG-21s, they can be easily handed through, uh, so MiG-21s have this very interesting ability to fly very low and avoid every single radar on the map, including AWACS. And if they fool AWACS, they have a lot of fun with it. So they can pop up at very weird places, meaning we need to keep an eye out. We still do not have any, so we'll use the F10 menu, see if we still have a current mission on the air interdiction arena. Yeah, we have uh, 0 -0 077 for Firefly. Uh, and that's 35 kilometers away, we can also go for Rambo 171. So, uh, we... I think we overcompensated a bit there, uh, but we should be good on that. And we overcompensated a lot going back there. So, I get this feeling that Firefly might actually be... ...either destroyed or already captured. But that's why we're flying into the area. Basically, the, our first job will be armed reconnaissance, making sure that there are no targets in the area. This is also where the uh, radars, where the targeting computer here is very useful, uh, since it's a far superior tool with identifying different targets. Uh, uh, I get this feeling that Ant Hill is going to be our end target anyway, so... Might as well call it in. Chevy 3-1, air interdiction, Ant Hill. And Ant Hill just disappeared from my map. So we have someone connecting that basically calls himself Sweden, which is German for Sweden, and that's kind of hilarious. Uh, I get the feeling he's gonna fly the Vegan as well. If he doesn't, I think he picked the wrong call sign. No visuals on any target at this point in time. Uh, we better call up the map again, see if we have an air interdiction mission. Yeah, 083 for 6 kilometers, and we should have an armored column. Uh, at that point, we should actually have a visual right now. Uh, we also have 043. Uh, yeah, I can see someone shooting at us, disengaging. Okay, so we know we know where they are now. Sam launch, Sam launch. Crap, 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 crap. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of that bi big fuel tank, and then we are gonna come around for another engagement. We are gonna engage that, and we are going to win. Uh, no one wins an argument with a bigot. I get the feeling we might have friendly aircraft in the area, but not sure at this stage of time. Okay, so target is basically to the left of the factories. Uh, let's go with our... Traffic, 
Chevy 3-1 rifle. Those people shot at me, so if this is a blue on blue, that's entirely their fault. Speaking of blue and blue, one of our hornets just got wasted by a mirage. Our first missile seems to have hit a, hit a target, so that means we are going in with another one. Uh, we are coming in from this angle this time and hoping that we are still too low for enemy zaps. My controls feel a bit sluggish. I'm a bit worried that we might have suffered a hit, but I can't actually see any risk signs of damage. So we should be locked on to these guys now. A little bit higher. Come on. Baby, I need that IR sight to go on target. Come on, on target. Why? We'll have to abort. There's no way we can get an RB away at this point. We'll need to also stay low to avoid the, that fire. We basically passed under the power lines and the enemy fired another SAM that did not hit. We will be coming around to duel with the enemy once again. We are a little bit too high. Uh, current the Alpha traffic, UC 3132, pair of Hornets waiting short, runway 22 for the A10 to depart. So we are going to push it and to the left of the factory. Pull up the site picture and target. Uh, Chevy 3 1 rifle. Unclear what we what we hit. Sam launch, Sam launch. Missile ran out of fuel. Uzi three one and Uzi three two line up runway two two. All right, so we're coming around and we're going to use our two remaining RB-75s. We will be coming around from the other side of the city, making sure we have an angle of attack that's basically fixed to go. Unknown F-5, be aware, heavy air defense in target area. So we basically got friends in the sky now, uh, an F5 right above us. Uh, as long as he can basically bait those SAMs for us, we should be in a nice place. Oh, I hope that's not our call. Climb with the sights. Ah, crap, we're on the wrong approach vector. Very much wrong approach vector. We must have taken some damage. My rudder is weird right now, so I am going to... Sam launch, Sam launch! And the missile ran out of fuel. That must be a man pad. 
there is most likely no doubt in my mind that that's a man pad. So we will be doing a left hand turn, coming back around and engaging with RB75. And the F5 went on to other adventures. Since we have dropped our reserve tank, it's not really a good idea on our on our part to uh, overextend our fuel reserves. What I would like to do is just return to base, grab some high uh, high drag bombs, and bomb the living shit out of that place. So, we are racing our targets. I have no idea how my how my targeting computer got this misaligned. Uh, Chevy 3-1 Fox. Chevy 3-1 Rifle, sorry. I actually mixed them up there and that's not really a good thing. We have one missile left, and with missile I'm meaning RB-75. So we will be coming around, we will be doing a run, and we will hit another target. And then we will return to a nearby base. But I'm still kind of worried about the damage our aircraft have sustained. So we will be slowing down a bit and seeing about getting a a positive angle on this. And at least now I know all I need to do is pull the targeting computer up a bit. There we have it. Chevy free one rifle. Got it! And I'm fairly certain that's another hit on us by the anti-aircraft artillery, but that's basically it. Let's check our vector. Shuttle run, MiG-23, Spike, Angels 20. We have two options. We can return basically straight ahead and return to an upper field, or we can try for uh, Krasnov. But basically, that field is surrounded by SAMs, so landing there might actually be be a tougher challenge than we bargained for. At any rate, I. I get this impression that my aircraft is actually damaged, so... It would be a better idea to go for the bigger field where we know there are sufficient repair facilities. And uh, in case the Russians want to disrupt us on the way home, we can always use our RB-74s to great effect. Yeah, considering the controls right now, I would be very surprised if this airplane is not damaged. And let me tell you one thing, I have a problem landing the Vigan as it is. Trying to land a damaged Vigan is not going to be fun at all. So we are on target. Uh, we'll wait with our inbound report until we actually have a visual on an up. Great. 
there's a small lake uh, that will mark our turning point onto Anaba. Anapa control, one vegan wounded inbound. We will be doing a bit of slowdown here, but not much. The vegan is supposed to be landed at uh, quite a high speed, at least compared to other aircraft. So we should have an APA basically that direction now. Yeah, I, can, I have a visual on an APA. So one of the things we will be doing is we are going to set that for landing. Uh, same, f yeah, ref Lola, and uh, yeah, we good. Come on, Anapa, we need to talk. Anapa, Chevy 3 1, inbound. Chevy 3 1, Anapa, fly heading 221 46, QFE 29 decimal 70. Anapa, Chevy 3 1, request navigation assistance. Alright, we are wheels down. Chevy 3 1 wounded, incoming an APA. A little bit faster. We are gonna stay on course and try to let the throttle do the work for us. It would be interesting to try and find anti-sea operations. We'll see if there are any, if we manage to land this. Our ejection seat is armed for the eventual LED that we don't. We are continuing to lower altitude. I don't have Ah, uh, crap, there are... Uh, traffic, Enfield 1, taxiing runway 22. Enfield 1, 1, clear to taxi to runway 22. Uh, okay, so, basically, as long as it doesn't taxi on... Chevy 3, 1, final approach, runway 22. Chevy 3, 1, clear for visual, contact tower. I have landing clearance. So basically what that means is that we're going to lock in something, we're going to pull the reverser switch, and wait. The beauty of the reverser switch means that we can land at basically any speed we like, uh, as long as we... Uh, as long as we do it without damaging anything, the engine will simply reverse. And this is actually a quite beautiful thing, because since the engine will reverse, uh, 
basically it does, we don't even need to power down. The engine will stop the plane for us. Uh, beautiful thing indeed. Chevy 31 Anapa, final approach. Runway 22. However, I want to stress that this is the one that I think. Oh, come on! Negative Anapa, Chevy 31 cannot go around. Anapa Chevy 31 cannot go around. Chevy 31. Anapa, check landing gear. Runway Chevy runway is clear, ignore the uh, traffic. Roger that. Chevy 31. Anapa, check landing gear. Runway 22. Chevy 31. Go around, runway occupied. Chevy 31. Anapa, reverse rim process. process. We are reversing and we're on the ground. Chevy Free One taxiing. Uh, we are just going to have to find a place on the airfield where we can't. Yeah, we can taxi at the end of the runway. Chevy Free One taxi to parking area. Ah, uh, Roger that. We are not going to try and uh, be as fancy as to uh, taxi. Uh, basically, we're not going to turn around. Hey, this is actually one of my first good landings in the Vegan. And I did so when I was convinced the aircraft was damaged. I also think the fact that I didn't burn out my tire base is something to do with it. Chevy 3-1 taxiing, runway is clear. So all we need to do now is basically taxi back to the pad and either stop our flying for tonight or rearm. Uh, but I think actually think I, I want to do a rearm. Uh, rearm, repair, refuel. Obviously in quite a different order. Repair should probably be on the forefront. Okay, so radar's li lightening up again. We are passing what appears to be two hornets on the field here. Yeah, confirm two hornets. Uh, sorry, two eagles. Two F-15 eagles. Uh, we will be moving towards the further F. Further uh, prep pads and we'll be parking there. Uh, next thing I haven't really decided on if it's if we're going to deploy with uh, high drag bombs or if we are going for a repeat of the RB. 75. I'm actually inclined to go for a complete rearm with the bombs, since the bombs can be used more effectively. However, if we do that, it's basically just one run, then run. So we are going to 
get to that pad and I'm not going to deny the fact that I sometimes can find taxing a bit tedious. So we're go uh, going to roll up on the Hornet here and see if that's a friendly. And by friendly I mean it's a Finnish Hornet, but it's not a Finnish Hornet, so... We will be turning on to a parking area. We are going to see if we can't occupy the parking area next to the bigot. I know I sound... sound. Crimps traffic, Uzi 3132, pair of Hornets inbound uh, from the south, run and break runway 04. I know I sound a bit salty about uh, the F-15 in the chat, but the F-15 is part of the Flamed Cliffs package and it's, pretty, it's uh, a more or less open thing that the, F, that the, uh, the uh, Flamed Cliffs aircraft are much easier to fly. <laughs> and uh, since they are easier to fly... So basically, we got a pair hornets inbound on final approach. So we are going to take up a parking spot right here, and we are going to have to talk to the ground crew. Traffic, Uzi on the break. We're switching to nav. And we are powering down. Powering down all systems. Once I'm convinced we are powered down, we are going to have a talk with the ground crew. Request repair. Copy. So we are going to go for the repair, and I have no idea if and when that is going to be complete. So we're opening up our little menu here that basically tells us that we expended half our fuel that flight and we have the option of selecting a new loadout. So basically for the interest of showing something else, I'm very keen on high drag. However, I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, go F10, I'm going to check mich uh, <coughs> get current missions, and I'm going to see if there are any naval strike missions. There are no naval strike missions in progress, and that means that... Traffic, Uzi, final get out. 